Right, that's a good start. Let's just get to you, born in a temporary den in a hollow tree. You don't even know what a miracle you are yet. You're currently absolutely useless. You're blind, have no teeth, and are around one eight hundredth of your mother's size, proportionally the smallest baby of any placental mammal, which of course has its problems. Lying next to you is your equally helpless twin, which occurs in around 50% of panda births. Unfortunately, this doesn't mean the world gets two new pandas. Mother can't store that much fat, so can only look after one of you, meaning she has to choose who she thinks is the strong- Oh, never mind, that doesn't matter now. After the miracle birth, it's a miracle you survive. Between predators, the elements, and your mum potentially not knowing how to look after you, you're really up against it. Luckily, your mum knows his stuff, and you're well protected for your first month, getting lots and lots of cuddles. Your colour pattern is now fully developed as you get your first coat of soft fur, and you finally open your eyes for the first time. By two or three months, you start to realise that you can move on your own, getting your first bit of independence. But mum still wants to play with her little chubby wubby, so still a ways to go. At four months old, with some positive encouragement, you put on a brave face and take your first step into the great beyond. It's slightly different to what you're used to, and you can now see where mum's been getting all her snacks. A month after conquering the ground, you take to the skies. Well, almost. And shortly after that, mum introduces you to her favourite food, although her milk is still your primary food source. As the months go on, you travel through the mountain forests of central China, gradually eating more bamboo and less milk. It's now the one year mark and you're half the size of mum, but still not quite ready to go solo. You belong to the order of carnivora, and even possess the digestive system of a carnivore, so designed for meat. But mum doesn't teach you how to hunt, no, instead she teaches you the intricacies of what bamboo can be found where and which parts should be eaten when. Vital knowledge so you can just about survive on a diet that you probably shouldn't. You're now 18 or so months old and you don't have much time to play anymore as you're fully onto bamboo, so have to spend over 12 hours a day eating. You're still hanging around mum though, until she starts to bring back some new fellas and you decide it's about time you move out. You are now a sub-adult panda. Independent and alone. Don't worry, that's the way you like it. In fact, one of the ways you conserve the little energy your diet gives you is by completely avoiding any social situations unless you have to. Other people, I mean pandas, are very draining. The world is now your oyster, so you decide to sit still and munch down 15 kilos of bamboo a day, forming 99% of your diet. Even if you wanted to do something else, you don't really have a choice. Your carnivore digestive system, unsurprisingly, doesn't digest plants well, having limited ability to break down the cellulose cell walls, giving you little energy and protein. Your main source of nutrients comes from the limited starch content found in bamboo, which you have evolved a high capability to digest compared to other strict carnivores. Because of these digestive limitations, you must spend all day consuming copious amounts of food to survive, and that's all got to go somewhere. After your 37th toilet break, you decide to call it a day. You wake up the next morning and look for a cosy spot for the day's activities, then notice a marking. It smells male, quite high up, so probably large. Guessing an adult, best to avoid this territory. In service of not having to talk to each other, this is your primary way of communicating. Maybe it's time you get yourself a little territory. You find a nice patch of forest with no markings around, then change that by leaving your scent on various different landmarks. This tells other pandas about your age, height, sex, but most importantly, not to touch your bamboo. You've not been here long, but decide to make a move as the summer approaches. You head out the valleys and further up the mountain slopes, something you'd usually avoid, because more incline equals more energy. You know it's worth it this time though, and your effort is rewarded with, guess what? Bamboo. Shoots. At higher altitudes during the summer months is the shoot season, which are much richer in protein and starch than the leaves or stems. You spray a quick territory and take the opportunity to have some slightly more nutritional food that your body still doesn't digest properly. The only new drawback is that you're now not getting enough calcium, but you can make that up with the leaves in the winter. Speaking of winter, it's now here, and you're back down in the valleys. You're eating bamboo leaves and it's cold. Really cold. At this time it might make sense to eat something more nutritious, but no, you stick with your low energy but still readily available plant. This means you're sleeping more and moving less, although you do take the chance to have a little roll around. You don't really mind the winter as your thick coat provides enough warmth and excellent camouflage. You even cover yourself in horse manure for extra insulation so you can continue to munch away in peace. Another reason to hang out in the valleys outside the summer is mating season during the spring, and what a barrel of last that is. You're not quite ready for it yet though, and won't be till you're around 6 years old. 
that's 25,000 kilos of bamboo down the road, so better get started. You are now an adult panda. 100 kilos, 5 feet long, 2.5 feet tall with the second longest tail in the bear family. After a bit of debate, it has been decided that you are in the bear family, even with your questionable choices. It's the leaf season and you're still munching away, eating more now to keep up with your size. You're coping well with the excessive quantities of bamboo. I guess having a bite force designed for meat helps with this. Those cute chubby cheeks everyone loves are actually large muscles that had to adapt to be able to chew for over 12 hours a day, along with your now broader back molar teeth. At some point in your evolutionary history, your wrist bone started growing too much, only to end up serving as a thumb, further gravitating you towards bamboo. There's one more adaption to mention. That much bamboo would give a normal animal cyanide poisoning, but not you. You found a way to metabolise it and be just fine. As the months go on, you notice that the bamboo around you is starting to die, so you take off looking for a new territory with a different bamboo species that's just starting to flower. You can actually run, quite fast, but don't, because you know, bamboo, energy, same old. So decide to walk. As you come towards the forest with the fresh bamboo, you're blocked by several large, strange looking objects. This is annoying, because you kind of need to get to the food. Not really got any other choice. Can't get food any other way. Maybe should have learned to hunt. Oh, that doesn't matter now. It looks like you've been chosen. China claims ownership of your whole species and considers you a valuable cultural resource, so will loan you out to other countries to illustrate a strong bond and growing diplomatic relationship while strengthening their public image. These loans last 10 plus years and in return they receive up to a million dollars a year, which can be put towards panda conservation. Like many cultural resources, you must be looked after properly and can't be transferred without permission. Today's the start of your new life. The first thing you learn is that you're not the only panda. In fact, you were given the name Second, 50 years after the red panda due to your similar fondness of the same plant. Your full name is actually the giant panda, because you're so large. Speaking of that plant, you have loads of it, so just a quick territory mark and back to business. A week later, you have a fright when a stream of strange creatures continually passes an invisible wall at the edge of your territory. I guess all you can do is try to ignore them. As you go through your daily supply, you notice a few extra bits have been added. You eat them too. Can't hurt. Later in the day, after eating a bit less bamboo than your usual intake, you already feel full and call it a day early. Funny that. A year's gone by, not much has changed, till out of nowhere there's another panda in your territory, and you can smell that they're the opposite sex. Is it mating season already? Can't really tell in here. Female pandas are only in heat for one or two days once a year, so it's of vital importance that you both take the opportunity for the species' survival. If you do succeed, any cubs will also be the property of the Chinese government to eventually be returned and support conservation there. After greeting each other, everything's looking good. The female gets into position, then... Give him a second. Time's ticking. Oh look, now the female started eating. This shouldn't happen. And now they've both gone to sleep. Great. Well, that's a missed opportunity. Guess, better luck next year. What is wrong with you two? Right. So, you know each other quite well now, so come on, species survival. <sighs> this is a lost cause, isn't it? I've never known a species to be so clueless and unbothered about surviving. Everything you do seems to purposely make your life difficult, and the only thing you're arguably put on earth to do, you just don't care about. How could you have possibly survived this long? I guess this is what happens when your brain shrinks because you won't eat properly. <laughs> Well, this didn't go to plan, and now it looks like it's your time to go. Wonder why the loan didn't get renewed. It has been theorised that China will take their pandas back to make a point over worsening diplomatic relations. Or maybe the zoos just don't want to pay millions of dollars for you. Who knows. Find a territory, find some bamboo, back to normal. It is mating season. That will go anywhere, but we'll give it a go. As a male, you listen for any vocalisations and sniff out any markings that indicate a female in heat. Once you've found some, it surprisingly piques your interest and you then manage to find the female, along with four other male bears. That's odd, I think. You show some aggression towards them, which along with your larger size gets them to back down, allowing you to take a spot next to the female. Okay, so it seems to be going well this time, but we all know how it ends. 
as you're chomping away on bamboo, the female signals you over, then... Wait, what? That all went to plan. No issues. After all this time. Well, it won't happen again next time. Well, that's really unexpected. Could it have all been a lie? Could it be that there's another reason why you wouldn't mate in captivity? Could it be that you're not stupid at all, and just a highly specialised animal who's perfectly adapted to their own very specific, unique environment, where even though you derive more energy from meat, the lower nutrition but extremely abundant bamboo was still the better option? Could it be that you were never actually bad at mating, and when left to your own devices in the wild, produced babies at a comparable rate to the American black bear, having had no problems with anything for the last three million years, until a certain invasive species turned up and started messing everything up? Could it be that the only miracle is that humans can get to the moon, build smartphones, and are capable of all this complex thought, but still think the pandas are the ones that are getting in their own way? Who knows?